everyone. Welcome to CB Kids Online. I'm really glad you could join in today. We've been talking about some strange and true things that are in the Bible. We're calling these lessons, Something Strange is Going On Here. And we have one more Something Strange lesson to share today. Do you remember Balaam's donkey that talked to Balaam so he would know what God wanted him to know? Or Jonah and the great fish so he would go where God wanted him to go? And the fish with the coin in its mouth that God sent right to Peter's line to remind Peter that Jesus is God's son? Some pretty strange but true things, huh? Our other Something Strange Bible lessons have reminded us that God is in control, that He loves us with a strangely great big love, and that we need to pay attention to what God wants us to know. We'll start our last Something Strange story in just a minute. But first, you guessed it, let's start with prayer. Whatever is happening in your life, Prayer is a good place to start. We can pray about anything that we need help with, anything that we're excited about, and we definitely just want to praise God because of who He is. Tell your family some things that you want to pray about. And now we're going to pray in three, two, one. Dear God, thank you so much for all of the kids and families joining in today, and for your love for us all the time. Thank you for your Holy Bible scriptures that help us know more about you. Thank you, God, for Jesus and all that you do for us. Please help us, God, to do the good things that you want us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, today we have one last story about something strange going on. Each of our other something strange stories had an animal in it. But today's story is a little different. This time, the strange thing that happened was with a thing. Before we start our story, I brought some water in today to see if some things sink or float. I bet you've tried this before. Let's see. I have some wood. Will it float? <laughs> yep, wood floats. I have a little duck. Will it float? Mm-hmm. The plastic duck floats too. Now, what about this piece of metal? Will it float or sink? It looks like it was part of a hammer or a tool. It's the top of it, so it's called the head of it. Float or sink? Whoa, that definitely sinks to the bottom. Hmm, I was just wondering, do you think there's anything I could do to make that metal float back up to the top instead of staying at the bottom? But maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's look at our story for today. Today we're reading a story from the book of 2 Kings chapter 6. The book of 2 Kings is in the Old Testament about a third of the way in. You probably remember that God's people in the Old Testament were called the Israelites. Now, if I asked you what a book called Second Kings would be about, what would you say? If you said about some kings, you're right. The books of kings are about the Israelites and other kings. But this book also has a lot about two of God's prophets. Remember, a prophet is someone with a message from God. And these prophets were Elijah, and then the next one who learned from Elijah was a man named Elisha. Their names sound a lot alike. Listen to this true and strange story about Elisha and some other prophets from 2 Kings chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. The group of the prophets said to Elisha, The place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let's go to the Jordan River. There, every man can get a pole and let's build a place to live. Elisha said, Go. One of them said, Please go with us. Elisha said, I will go. So he went with them. When they arrived at the Jordan River, they cut down some trees. As one man was cutting down a tree, the head of his axe fell into the water. He yelled, Oh, my master, I borrowed that axe. Elisha asked, Where did it fall? 
The man showed Elisha the place where it fell. Then Elisha cut down a stick and threw it into the water. It made the iron head float. Elisha said, pick up the axe head. Then the man reached out and took it. Uh, did that just say what I think it said? Let me read those last few verses again. Elisha asked, where did it fall? The man showed Elisha the place. Then Elisha cut down a stick and threw it into the water. It made the iron head float. Elisha said, pick up the axe head. Then the man reached out and took it. Yep, that's what I thought it said. That is really strange. Elisha was a human man. He wasn't some sort of magician or anything. But he was a man who trusted God with all his heart. Let's look at my floating and sinking things again. There's nothing I could do to make that heavy metal thing come up and float on the top of the water. Hey, look at these diving toys. Maybe in the summer you like to hold your breath and dive down deep in a pool with nice clear water and get diving toys. But that only works when you can see the things at the bottom, doesn't it? The man who lost the head of his axe couldn't possibly see the bottom of the Jordan River. It would have been muddy or sandy, and the water would have been way too murky to see through. To top it off, he had borrowed the axe. Maybe he didn't have enough money to buy his own axe. And now, what would he tell his friend who loaned it to him? Sorry, your axe is at the bottom of the Jordan River, somewhere. That friend would definitely not be happy about that. Elisha had learned about trusting God from the prophet Elijah, and now he was the teacher. These young prophets were learning about God from Elisha. Elisha knew that these young prophets needed to learn to trust God in all things. So Elisha helped them learn to trust by asking God to do something for them that a person could not ever do. Making this axe head float back up to the top of the water after it had sunk, Elisha may have also thought that this would be a great way for the younger prophets to have a story to tell about God. Just imagine! Now when the young prophet went back to his friend to return the axe, he wouldn't have to tell his friend that the axe was stuck at the bottom of the Jordan River. He could hand that axe back and excitedly tell the story of how God had brought back something they thought was lost. God helped Elisha teach these young prophets some important things that day through a very strange event. First, God is powerful enough to do anything. Second, God cares about and provides the things that we need. And He even cares about how we can be kind to our friends, like letting the man return the borrowed axe head. I know if I had seen this strange thing happen that God did through Elisha, I would have been telling everybody I saw, hey, guess what God just did? And we can do that too. When God does something special in our lives, we can give Him the thanks and the praise. And we can tell other people about it too. That way, they can learn to trust in God too. You know, we've talked about some really strange things these past few weeks. Sometimes life is kind of strange and even hard to understand. But God says we don't have to understand everything. If we trust in Him, He'll show us the good things even in the strange things. Let's read our verses from Proverbs one more time. Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't depend on your own understanding. Remember the Lord in everything you do and He will give you success. This week, maybe you could try some floating and sinking things like we did here. Or maybe you could help your family build something like the young prophets were building and talk to your family and friends about the amazing things God can do and how much He loves us. Have a great week. 
Remember to show some of God's strangely great love. And don't forget, we have some fun songs to worship God with. Come on now, join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give Him everything, He's good in every way. Come on now, join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give Him everything, He's good in every way. He is always there.
turns it all around Yeah, he gives me joy in every situation Keeps my spirits high no matter what I'm facing